the Carolina Hurricanes are at home looking to bounce back against the Detroit Red Wings tonight. Find out how they can come away with the win as well as players to watch in this episode of Locked on Hurricanes. Your Locked on Hurricanes, your daily podcast on the Carolina Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Kaniacs. I'm your host, Jared Ellis, and you're listening to Locked On Hurricanes on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And as always, thank you for making Locked On Hurricanes your first listen of this Friday morning, afternoon, evening, whenever you are listening. Thank you very much. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Now, the Carolina Hurricanes are looking to bounce back from their loss against the LA Kings earlier in the week tonight against the Detroit Red Wings. This is uh going this was the Hurricanes or the LA game was the Hurricanes first regulation loss in quite a while. Um so the Hurricanes are definitely going to be looking to bounce back here uh against the Red Wings. Um they are not having a morning skate today. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see how that plays in um, because they have had the past few days uh, with no games. Obviously, yes, they practiced and whatnot. But that'll be interesting to see how this plays into tonight's game with having these extended breaks in between games uh obviously it's helped them in the past we'll see if that's the same case today um they you know been on fire uh as, as of late you know so you know i think you know they're they're going to be fine i think that you know that momentum yeah, they've been, you know, carrying or they've had on their side is going to still be on their side uh, tonight. And I still see them, you know, having you know, that uh, fire in them and them, you know, for the most part, really ever since December, they've all been on uh, the same page. They've been clicking. I, I don't see that uh, changing anytime soon. Um, I think, you know, I said, you know, while they were, you know, on, you know, their, their streak and whatnot, that they were, they weren't going to win out. They weren't going to win every, every game remaining in the season. They weren't going to play in simple. I mean, they lost in shootout to St. Louis. I mean, yes, that kept the point straight going, but, you know, it, it, they weren't going to win out. There were going to be other losses, uh, and, and there's going to be more. Plain and simple, between now and the end of the season, there's going to be more losses for the Hurricanes. Uh, they're not going to win every single game. Uh, I think that game against LA is you know just one of the bumps in the road. Uh, it's nothing you know to you know freak out about or anything like that uh and you know, it'd be the same with this game tonight obviously it's hours and hours away um but you know if yeah they were to drop this game again it, unless you know it's just a complete and total dumpster fire then you know it's nothing to freak out about i, I think they're gonna be fine you know, everyone you know for the most part is, is clicking they're all doing, you know, what they need to do. I think that the Hurricanes are in a good spot right now uh, as well. So I'm not, you know, overly, you know, concerned. Uh, you know, this is, you know, obviously, you know, game one of two home games in three days. So they are going to have a quick turnaround. Um I think uh, the 
more interesting question is going to be uh, the following game. You know, after that, um, I couldn't tell you who it's going to be against, uh, <laughs> but it, you know, it's uh, or it's going to be Sunday at uh, against Minnesota. That's who it's going to be against. I think that will be the more interesting one, considering the break in between they've had and. Yes, they'll obviously have uh, Saturday without a game. Yeah, they do practice on Saturday, but yeah, I think that will be the more interesting one to see how things end up playing out. I think that would be the one where you see more of the uh, extended break type stuff uh, them dealing with. Uh, but yeah, you know, for the most part, you know, I think. Yeah, the Hurricanes are coming into this game, um, you know, with momentum on their side. Obviously, you know, Red Wings, you know, their last game uh, was a 3-2 win over the Panthers on Wednesday. So they've also had, they had a day off yesterday, which I say day off, but actually as soon as it, those words left my mouth, I remembered the pictures and videos of them practicing at wake competition center so they're going to be a bit fresher uh than the hurricanes um in that regard of they just played but again i think you know ultimately the hurricanes they got the momentum on their side um they're kind of used to these extended breaks in between games because they've dealt with this a few times this season so they kind of know what they need to do what they need to avoid doing and, and that kind of stuff so the the no morning skate, I think that's kind of the most interesting thing here. Like, okay, you know, what are we going to do? You know, we, we had all these days off um, or days in between games. You know, so we'll see what happens. Uh, it's not one that I'm, again, you know, overly concerned about. Um, you know, obviously the Red Wings, they are, you know, a bit better. Uh, they're they're still on the come up. You know, they're currently sitting at 23, 16, and 5, and 51 points tied for fourth in the Atlantic Division. Again, coming off of that win against the Panthers on Wednesday. So it, they're definitely going to be in for uh, more of a challenge with Detroit than they have been in years past. Um, but you know, again, you know, I think they're going to be all right. Uh, I'm not, you know, overly concerned about the break in between games. Because, um, you yeah, know, that's kind of been the biggest thing, you know, leading into this game. You know, there hasn't really been, you know, any drama or anything like that. You know, the Hurricanes, you know, speaking of games against Detroit, they won the last one uh, against Detroit back in December, December 14th. Uh, the Hurricanes one two one in Detroit. So yeah, you know, you could maybe look at Detroit looking to get a little payback for that game. Uh, but you know, again, I think you know the Hurricanes are going to be fine tonight. Um, you know, obviously, you know, the Hurricanes are pretty beat up with injury. Uh, um, you know, you still have uh Freddie Anderson out with his blood clotting issue. It's been since. November 6th uh, is when uh, he initially, when that was initially announced, uh, shared on December 17th that he's been cleared and could start skating. Uh, but uh, from everything I've heard, he has not. So yeah, it is what it is. Pyotr Kochetkov is still in concussion protocol after being hit on January 12th. Um, he did work uh, with. Hurricanes goaltending coach on Wednesday and Thursday uh, before the practices, but there's still currently no timetable for his return. I was getting that information uh, from the Hurricanes uh, game preview for this game that we're talking about, the game against the Red Wings. Uh, Martin Natchez, and we're going to talk about him in just a second as well when we talk about the players to watch. And we will dive into that right after this quick break, folks. Now, folks, we're driven by the search for better. But when it comes to hiring, uh, 
the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to the Indeed data and matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And Indeed doesn't just help you hire faster. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites, according to a recent Indeed survey. Now, leveraging over 140 million qualifications and preferences every day, Indeed's matching engine is constantly learning from your preferences so you so the more you use indeed the better it gets so join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use indeed to hire great talent fast so right now listeners of this show will get a 75 dollars sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash locked on. Just go to indeed.com slash locked on right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash locked on. That's L O C K E D O N. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire. You need Indeed. Now, folks, the NFL season is wrapping up or has wrapped up. Playoffs are uh, in full swing right now, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, and the, which is the best way to find popular parlays and more. And of course, you're not just limited to the NFL either. Baseball season is going to be here before we know it. NBA season's going on. NHL is going on. So the possibilities for you are endless. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Now, looking at players to watch, uh, we Briefly mentioned Martin Natchez in the previous segment, uh, but he has been out with injury. With uh, again, I'm going back to that same article. Uh, been out with an upper body injury uh, during practice, uh, which he suffered on January 4th. Uh, missed five games since, but is expected to be available to return to the lineup tonight. Uh, so that's obviously going to be a key thing to watch because. Obviously, if he does, then someone's going to be coming out of the lineup. Who it will be, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, you know, so that's obviously going to be one to watch. Obviously, no morning skate this morning. We are re- we are going to be pretty left in the dark on that until probably about 5, 6 o'clock tonight. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't. He's kind of. I'm on the fence with that. Uh, you know whether or not we see him tonight. You know, you obviously I ain't gonna complain if we do. Um, obviously I ain't gonna complain if we don't either because you know the Hurricanes have been rolling without him. Um, and you know if he's not a hundred percent ready to go, I wouldn't put him in. Uh, you know it's he's a guy you are going to need down the stretch of the season heading into the postseason, you don't want to risk him uh, getting more hurt um, by, you know, you know, playing when he shouldn't. So, you know, 
if, if we do see him, he is definitely going to be slotting in like on the fourth line. He isn't going to get a whole lot of playing time, but that's to be expected. We, we've seen that already this season with guys like you know Svech coming back into the lineup. You know, he starts out there, kind of eases back into it, and then before you know it, he's back in his normal spot. You know, so it's not one I'm going to be you know super. Uh, beat up about if we don't see him tonight because again I would rather him sit for another game and then come back Sunday against Minnesota and be a hundred percent rather than be going out there at say like ninety five percent you know uh, so we'll see what happens there whether there's no concrete stuff to go off of all we have is. You know, what's been said of, oh, you could possibly, you know, expect him to, or he, but is expected to be available to return to the lineup tonight. That's all we got. There's no guarantee of whether or not it's going to happen. You know, just like Freddie Anderson, he's been cleared to start skating for over a month, but to the best of my knowledge, he hasn't, you know, so there's no guarantee with that again. That's just when we're really going to have to wait and see what happens. Uh, but the Hurricanes do have several players to watch. Like I said, it's not going to be a really big deal if Natchez doesn't come back tonight because they do have a lot going for them right now. Obviously, Sebastian, uh, he's going to be a player to watch. Obviously. Yeah, he's their all-star for a reason. He's been absolutely killing it. Um, the same with Seth Jarvis, you know, obviously, you know, uh, yeah, we'll talk about it in episode over the weekend when we talk about potential other all stars. Um, you know, since I don't know, he, he won't go. Uh, so you know, uh, he's obviously going to be one to watch, and he's on a three game point streak, uh, right now. Uh, he's been really good this season. I believe it's a contract year for him as well. So, you know, he's going to be playing his butt off and he has been, so you know, what you're going to get there. Uh, Jordan Martinuk also on a three game point streak. And, you know, he has uh, five points uh, in six games to start to 2024. Uh, so he's been a guy that's been really, really hot. Things have been clicking. Things have been going uh, for him. Uh, both uh, Brent Burns and Jalen Chatfield uh, have been really, really good. Uh, Chatfield uh, back-to-back games with an assist. Uh, and both of them had assists in the L.A. game. Um, and Brent Burns has 11 points in his last nine games so both of those guys really um really hitting their strides brent burns especially you know he had a slow start to the year so for him to be coming on like he is in the second half of the season i think that's going to be really beneficial for the hurricanes uh gaining momentum or and then sustaining it heading into the playoffs I think that's going to be really, really important. So again, eleven in his last nine games. That's that's crazy good for Brent Burns. Uh, he's again after a slow start to the season. He's really been fantastic uh, in in the, in this second half uh, of the season. Jack Drury has five points in his last six games. Uh, Steph Nazan has three points in his last three and two. Uh, a bigger uh, window there, uh, seven points in Nason's last nine games. So, you know, you look at all of that, and then, of course, guys I didn't even mention, like Andrei Svechnikov, um, you know, you really got, you know, it's everyone chipping in here. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of guys, you know, putting in the work, and getting the job done for the Hurricanes. Uh, and that's when they're at their best, too. You know, we've said it many times. That's it's when they're at their best is when it's everyone chipping in, not just one or two guys. It's not just Sebastian Ajo or, and or Andrei Sveshnikov doing it. Uh, you know, it's everyone. 
I think that's when the Hurricanes are at their best and when they're the most dangerous is when everyone is out there chipping in offensively and getting in on the score sheet. I know there's been a few games I've looked at as well uh, this season where you're having a uh, 10 plus guys show up on the score sheet, you know, whether it be, you know, scoring a goal or registering an assist. So, you know, I think that's, you know, fantastic. And that's something I want to see continue, you know, in this game against Detroit in Sundays against Minnesota. Uh, these are things that I really wanted to see from this team because that is when they are at their best is when, Everyone is on the same page. Everyone's chipping in. Everyone's doing their assignments and, and all that stuff. You know, that's when they're at their best. And they are, and they've been there in that area uh, this season, or well, not even this season, in kind of the recent times, in these recent games. They, that's what they've been doing. And I think that's really how they've turned this season around. Yeah, you know, they finally all got on the same page. And I think that's been really beneficial to them, uh, for real. Uh, I think that's that's been good for them. And you can tell when they're out there, they they have their their confidence back. You know, they're playing like we expect them to, you know. Um, they're not playing you know, like a team that we hadn't seen in, in nearly a decade, you know? Uh, but yeah, they, they're playing good hockey right now. And I think a good bit of that comes down to everyone being on the same page. And like I just said, you know, with all these guys, uh, and all the points they've registered, everyone's chipping in. I think that's the biggest thing here. Everyone's chipping in. And that is honestly probably my biggest key to the game tonight is for, you know, how they've you know been able to spread the puck around. Uh, I think that's honestly probably my biggest key to the game tonight is keep doing that. Keep doing what you're doing. It's working. Uh, you know, there's no need to change anything. I mean, obviously, you know, adapt game to the game, of course. But, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And this team, you know, what they're doing right now isn't broken. Obviously, you know, I... The if it ain't broke, don't fix it thing does not apply to the trade deadline because they're definitely going to have to make some moves there. And we will talk about that more over the weekend as well. Uh, yeah, that's going to be fun to deal with. Um, but, you know, in terms of their skaters, you know, their forwards, defensemen, not really a whole lot you know, to complain about right now. Yes, obviously, uh, additions and subtractions can be made. But as a whole, they're they're firing you know, on all cylinders right now, and really want that to continue tonight. Uh, again, like I said, biggest key to the game: keep doing what they're doing. But we do have more keys to the game, and we will dive into those right after this quick break, folks. Now, I know we come to sports to escape from some sort some of the crazy realities of life but can we just talk for a minute about preparing for real life according to the fda pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of the worst flu season in over a decade this is scary i can't imagine a more helpless feeling if one of my friends or loved ones or just anyone i cared about in general got sick while a supply chain issue kept them from the life-saving medication they need. Thankfully, it will be okay because of Jace Medical. The Jace case is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial illnesses, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinuses issues, skin infections, among others. This stuff could happen to any of us. Visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician encounter it will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than today. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code Locked On. that's L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, to get $20 off your order. Now, keys to the game, folks. Again, I do want to reiterate, 
just keep doing what they're doing. Honestly, that's kind of the biggest one is because what they've been doing for the most part has been working. So definitely keep doing that. Don't try to get, you know, fancy or anything like that. Try to change things up. You know, obviously adapt game to day, game, opponent to opponent. Um, but for the most part, what they've been doing has been working. So don't, you know, again, keep doing what you're doing in that regard. You know, like I said, you know, you look at you know, all the guys you know, that have been racking up points lately. That's what you want. Uh, it, it's really getting spread around. It's a big team effort. So let's keep that going. Um, but getting away from that, uh, a big thing here is, you know, keeping their foot on the gas tonight. You know, come out, you know, first period when that puck drops, you know, you know have that foot to the floor um, and just keep it there, you know, for the next 60 minutes. Um, I think that's going to be really important for them. Uh, I think, you know, in the past, you know, they've, uh, well, uh, it's not a think, it's, pretty well proven you know they show up late uh and have to dig themselves out of a hole or they get uh pretty comfortable with a lead they have and then the other team comes back you know so just keep their foot on the gas you know for the full game um i mean you don't have to run up the score but it's also the other team's job to stop you and i'd say the exact same thing if the hurricanes were getting their butts kicked uh, as well it's their job to stop the other team. Um, but obviously, you know, that's beside the point. Um, but yeah, play the full 60 minutes tonight. That that's gonna be key. Uh I, and that kind of feels I kind of feel like a broken record with that, but yeah, because it has been such an issue with this team over the years of them not playing the full 60 minutes. I do feel like I have to mention it. Um, special teams is continuing to boom. Uh, so obviously I do want to see that continue. Uh, we've talked about it a lot in recent episodes. Uh, and yeah, the hurricanes are talking about it a lot because, and they should, because their special teams have been excellent, uh, really since December, um, penalty killing alone, uh, is at since December, uh, is at 92.7%, uh, stopping 63 of 68 chances uh and then on power play it's at uh 35.3 percent uh converting on 24 68 chances both of which are first in the nhl in that time period so again i really want to see this uh hot streak uh for their special teams continue because again you know you look at the first quarter of the season i guess um it was rough to watch it was pretty darn rough to watch uh out there you know what they're doing on the power play uh penalty kill was not living up to these standards set in previous years and again that was also just the whole team in general they it won't pretty we all know it. we don't want to talk about it uh but you know it Definitely want to see special teams continue uh, the boom that they are on. I am going to quickly look to see where Detroit's um, power play and penalty killing uh, ranks, because uh, that is always an interesting uh, matchup there of, you know, just how, you know, that stuff matches up, you know, is there, you know, potential you know, advantage the Hurricanes could have. Uh, we are going to start with the power play. Um, and while we're here, we are going to see where the Hurricanes are at overall in the league. Right now, uh, again, this is full season, not just since December. Uh, Hurricanes are at fourth in the NHL on power play at 27.2%. Again, you know, they are a top five team, you know, in terms of that. So that's fantastic. A Detroit on the power play is at 14th in the NHL. So pretty middle of the pack at 21.6% on the power play. Uh, penalty killing. Uh, the Hurricanes are at 7th in the league. They have climbed a couple spots since I last looked. They were at ninth the last time. And that is at 83.7% on the penalty killing. Um, so top 10 unit there as well. The Hurricanes have really, again, turned this stuff around on the season. Again, you know, we talked about, you know, since December, but 
just even as a whole on the season, they are top 10 in both, again, power play being uh, top five. But the Red Wings penalty killing uh, unit is at 13th in the NHL at 80.8%. Uh, so, you know, the Red, the Hurricanes do have the advantage in the special teams battle, uh, at least on paper, but the Red Wings are not like, you know, super, super far behind. Yes, they are behind them uh, with quite a bit of teams, you know, in between, but it's not like, you know, the Hurricanes are at the top. Red Wings are at the bottom. Red Wings are kind of middle of the road, upper middle, you know, in terms of their special teams. So, you know, Hurricanes do have the advantage, and I do want them to take that advantage uh, and really exploit it to their benefit of being like, all right, you know, our power play has been stupid hot uh, as of late. You know, let's really, you know, pour it on and you know do our thing uh you know you look at a guy like seth jarvis or steph nason on the power play you know just how good they have been this season let's really you know they've had it going let's try to feed it to them uh or feed the pucks through them and see what happens i think that's a good idea to do tonight or at least starting out yeah because of course you know they have been so good detroit may be planning for that of course um, but you know, let, you know, like you, you know, you got these guys that are hot on the power play right now and you have that advantage at least, you know, start out the game, like, let's just see what happens, you know, um, see if they can get something going. Um, obviously, you know, you got to draw the penalties of course, but you know, another thing I do want to see tonight is, uh, kind of ties into, you know, what we were talking about earlier with Brent Burns. Uh, but, you know, some offense from uh, the defense, you know, uh, I don't want it to run entirely through there because I don't think that is sustainable long term. Uh, we've talked about that before, you know, when the Hurricanes entire offense was basically running through their defensemen. Um, but I, I, I definitely want to see some offense from these guys tonight. You know, I talked about Brent Burns uh, and, you know, what he's done as of late. Um you know, and Jalen Chatfield as well, uh, both assists in that L.A. game. Chatfield, back-to-back uh, -back games with assists. Uh, Burns, 11 points in his last nine games. So, you know, I do want to see that continue as well. Then you look a couple games ago, Brett Pesci, uh, the game against Pittsburgh, how he had two goals. He scored the overtime winner. You know, you kind of look at all these guys right here. You know, they're, they're, they've got some stuff going. I want to see that continue. I'm kind of mainly looking at Brent Burns here, um, you know, because he's kind of the one that will rack up points. Uh, but, you know, again, looking at Jalen Chatfield, he's got a little thing going. Again, Brett Pesci, you know, he's got that game was in Pittsburgh that wasn't too long ago. Uh, Brady Shea, of course, you always, you know, you know, he can be an offensive force um, as well. Again, you know, Jacob Slavin ain't going to be. Uh, I'd like to see uh, some from Dimitri Orlov. He's definitely settled into his role on that third pairing with Jalen Chadfield. They've developed some good chemistry. Um, you know, so I'd definitely like to see uh, some defensemen show up on the score sheet tonight, you know, whether it be a goal or an assist. I definitely want to see that because they've been really good as of late. And I do want to see them get rewarded on that score sheet. Again, Burns, of course. Uh, 11 points in his last nine games. He really has been. But I want to see that love spread around some as well. Um, but, of course, most of all, I want to see the Hurricanes come away with the win tonight. Uh, so make sure you are following along on social media at LO underscore Hurricanes and myself at Jared Ellis underscore 96. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow when we recap this game as well as some more content over the weekend uh, looking at other potential Canes All-Stars, other uh, potential Canes Hall of Famers uh, as well. So we got a lot of fun stuff coming over the weekend, plus previewing the game against the Wild. Almost forgot about that again in the same episode. Don't want to do that, folks. But again, make sure you're following along on social media. A lot of fun stuff coming out this weekend. So be there and let's go Canes.